Over the last 20 years, institutions have moved to the center in debates concerning economic development. Poor quality institutions have come to be seen as the root cause of poor economic performance. One of the better known recent perspectives on this matter is contained in a popular book by Asamaglu and Robinson called Why Nations Fail. The authors argued that failed nations have extractive institutions which serves the interests of narrow elites, while su successful economies have inclusive institutions which allow innovation and growth to flourish. In South Africa's case, while our legal and democratic system still display signs of life and vitality, our state executive institutions show strong signs of weakness and corrupt capture. The problem with grand theories and what I call overly ideological policy prescripts is that they do not do justice to the complexity of the relationship between institutions and economic development, which necessarily varies over time and particular circumstances. Similarly, as tempting as it may be, we cannot simply copy what has worked elsewhere in the world without fully appreciating the enabling conditions which allowed institutions and economies in particular contexts to flourish. If you take the case of Singapore, which is currently uh, now in news, I know that it's in the news because of some premier visiting them. <laughs> Singapore has a highly effective working model of state capitalism, which debunks the global standard view that fully privatized enterprises are more efficient than state-owned companies.